watching Monday edition of News Mongolia. Today is February 7th. For our top stories, daily updates on COVID-19 status in Mongolia. Mongolian Prime Minister meets with Premier of the State Council of the People's Republic of China. Direct flights connecting USA and Mongolia discussed. For other news, stay tuned. Our first story, the Ministry of Health and the National Center for Communicable Diseases provided its daily updates on COVID-19 status in Mongolia. The Ministry of Health today reported that 860 new COVID-19 cases were detected after tests were carried out at PCR laboratories across the country. Three people, all with underlying health conditions, died of COVID-19 complications in the past 24 hours. All new cases are of domestic transmission, 584 out of which were confirmed in Ulaanbaatar, and the remaining 276 were confirmed in the provinces. 5,561 COVID-19 patients are being treated at hospitals nationwide. Additionally, 26,224 patients are being treated at home. Among the COVID-19 patients being treated at hospitals nationwide, 1,425 are showing mild symptoms of illness and 70 are in critical condition. As of now, around 2.17 million people have had two doses of a COVID-19 vaccine and 31% of the population has received the booster shot so far. Prime Minister of Mongolia, Oyu Irtin, is paying a working visit to the People's Republic of China. On February 5th, he held an official meeting with Premier of the State Council of the People's Republic of China, Li Keqian. The sides exchanged views on accelerating bilateral relations and reached agreements on a wide range of issues. Under the Mongolian government's new economic recovery policy, the two sides agreed on ensuring the active participation of private entities and investors in large-scale border checkpoint projects and in the energy and industrial sectors, as well as projects designed to decentralize Ulaanbaatar and support green development. Close cooperation was suggested to speed up the construction of the new infrastructure at border checkpoints. The Gashan Suhat Gansmot, Shive Hurunseke, and Bichik Tsunghat of Trailway border checkpoints were also discussed. The issue of railroad infrastructure at the Kashan Suhat border checkpoint was resolved after over 14 years of discussion. Prime Minister Ayun Yurtin said that the government of Mongolia is focusing on the launch of railroad construction at border checkpoints in the near future. As China trade over with Russia and the EU has hit an all-time high, views were exchanged on the construction of a 987-kilometer highway from Altenbotlak to Zamingot. The project has been discussed for many years as part of construction work to be carried out for the Mongolia-Russia-China Economic Corridor Program. To reduce traffic congestion in Ulaanbaatar, China and Mongolia will cooperate on a number of projects, such as introducing a new public transportation option based on advanced technology and building a city highway network. Highlighting the importance of strengthening cooperation in the fight against climate change, the sites express willingness to actively cooperate on large-scale projects to prevent desertification and dust storms, including the implementation of Mongolia's One Building Trees campaign. Premier Li Keqiang thanked Prime Minister Ayungirton for his visit and attendance of the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics opening ceremony. He added that special attention will be paid to having the Zamingwood Airland Border Checkpoint return to normal operations. The Chinese Premier also noted that travel between the two countries, including travel for Mongolian students enrolled at Chinese universities, will be gradually resolved alongside increasing scholarship opportunities for Mongolian students. In the fight against the pandemic, he said that the Chinese side will be able to continue to provide support by supplying COVID-19 vaccines. The two countries' premiers agreed to have close cooperation in all possible fields to further develop comprehensive strategic partnership relations between the two countries and expand mutually beneficial cooperation. Thank you for staying with us on MNB World. Now let's take a look at Mongolia's current affairs. 
The Embassy of Mongolia and the United Kingdom hosted a small Lunar New Year celebration focused on charitable work for the 17th year of the Water Tiger. Due to pandemic restrictions, the embassy wasn't able to hold any public events for the holiday. This year's gathering was hosted by Ing Suh Batumur, Ambassador-designate of Mongolia to the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Netherlands Ireland, and was attended by Mongolians residing in UK, including head of Mongolian Association in the United Kingdom, Tsirimbat, Ichtuya Consul, the Embassy's First Secretary of Citizens Affairs, Unurma, Cultural Envoy of Mongolia, and others. <laughs> Representatives of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Civil Aviation Authority, MIAT, and the Embassy of Mongolia in the United States have discussed a launch of a direct flight between Mongolia and the United States. During the online meeting, sites discussed the preparations for a direct flight and exchanged information on the progress of the work and further measures to be taken. In June 2020, Miat Mongolian Airlines conducted the first-ever direct flight to the United States in order to repatriate Mongolian citizens and to deliver personal protective equipment. The second direct flight was conducted in August 2020. In 2019, Miat Mongolian Airlines received Boeing 7879 aircraft. It has enabled the Ulaanbaatar-based airline to fly to European and North American cities, opening up a whole raft of new possibilities for intrepid travelers. The 24th Winter Olympic Games are underway in Beijing. Our next report is about one of the many athletes contributing to the development of winter sports in Mongolia. Let's take a look at the work she's doing. She became a member of the Mongolian Skating Union in 2011, and since then she's been taking part in international competitions as a skater from Mongolia. These past competitions include the 2011 Asian Winter Games in Kazakhstan, the 2019 Winter University, and the 2021 ISG Challenger Series. Last year, she was in a figure skating show with the Japanese figure skater Mao Asada, a three-time world champion and Olympic silver medalist. She is currently pushing a master's degree in figure skating techniques in Japan. Hello, my name is Martlirten. I've been skating since the age of 10. Now I'm 25. It's a great honor for me to be skating under the Mongolian flag at international competitions. Currently, she is active in three areas, including skating as a member of the Mongolian national team, doing her master's degree research, and working as a professional skater in ice shows. Marlerton is working to improve her skills and take part in the most prestigious competitions. Recently, a new ice rink opened in Mongolia. It's a big step forward for developing winter sports in Mongolia. I hope many young people will start learning figure skating, like Marlirten, and will contribute to the development of this sport in Mongolia. Two Mongolian athletes are taking part in the Beijing Winter Olympics, competing in cross-country skiing. Martlerton and her mother say that they want to see Mongolian figure skaters taking part in international competitions in the future. Now let's take a look at the currency exchange rates provided by Mongol Bank. Now let's take a look at our regular feature on sports. The Paris Grand Slam 2022 was held last weekend. This was the first big judo competition this year, and 285 judokas representing 52 countries competed in the competition. Japan finished in the first place with 7 gold, 5 silver and 6 bronze medals in the overall standings. Mongolia finished in third place with 2 gold, 1 silver, 1 bronze medal, while France finished in second place. Mesdames, Messieurs, 
Japan ended the International Judo Federation Paris Grand Slam on top of the standings with seven gold medals, while France and Mongolia made up the podium with three and two golds, respectively. On the first day of the competition, eight Mongolian judokas competed, and Mongolia's Bas Huyor Tumpirnle was victorious in the under 66 kilogram final, beating the world number one and double Olympic medalist Korea San Baul. Bas Hu, who recently replaced the retired labor hero Oron Tsugin the 48 kilogram weight class, lost to Japan's Natsumi Tsunoda in the final and won a silver medal. Toktwater Sindotur met Shahram Akhadov for the second bronze medal and the medal went to Mongolia. On the second day of the competition, Tsitsin Singhal won a gold medal in the 100 kg weight class, beating Ishangi Kokori of Azerbaijan in the finals. Tsitsin who defeated the 2021 world champion Kokoro Kaguri of Japan and the European Championship bronze medalist Marty Pumulalainen of Finland in the quarterfinals won the 2021 Abu Dhabi Grand Slam. The national team traveled to Paris with 13 athletes and won two gold, one silver and one bronze medal and took the third place. Japan led the way with seven gold, five silver and six bronze medals, followed by France with three gold, one silver and seven bronze medals. A total of 285 athletes representing 52 countries participated in the competition, including 154 male and 131 female athletes, including eight male and five male Strodakas from Mongolia. Here comes the weather forecast for the world's major cities. Watch the Monday's edition of News Mongolia. Thanks for staying with us. We'll see you again with more news updates. Stay tuned.